man, I'm so uncomfortable on camera. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> okay, Woo. it's been a minute. So last year I said this, my big mission for 2022. I am gonna have a table in New York Comic Con. I'm manifesting this future with this video and telling you so that you can hold me accountable. It's not gonna be easy. I'm gonna need to come up with a new book. I haven't published one in five years and I think I can make an even cooler one this time around. I'll need a banner and some merch, maybe some prints, posters, stickers. I, I don't know yet. I've never done this before and I'll be learning as I go. Um, yeah, so things didn't quite go according to plan. What is up guys? Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. All right, so this is how you get a table to New York Comic Con. For regular exhibitor tables, the cost of renting one can go from $1,000 to $5,000. So if you're an indie artist like me, your best bet is to get an Artist Alley table, which only costs about $500 for the whole con. Applications open up in the summer of each year and they're due around June. They require filling out a form which includes your work experience. They specifically ask if you've worked with mainstream publishers in the last year, as well as your social media, Twitter, Instagram, etc. So it's a whole thing. You know how they say no plan survives reality? Well, that kind of happened here. It started out well enough. I spent about a month working out the new book, plotting it out, breaking it down to pages, and then doing layouts to figure out if it was doable within the space constraints. By the end of April, I started working out the pages, laying out and scripting as I went. The story really seemed to be cooking. I had these cool designs, a great opening, a great ending in my mind, and that's when tragedy struck. It was a normal April day. I spent about five hours drawing the book. I spent another six at my day job at the Art Students League, then back home to do some chores and unwinding before bed. I was at the grocery when I got an IG message from my friend Matt, who needed my help getting back into his account after getting hacked. I was just like, oh, tomatoes, and oh, let me help him verify. A quick verification screenshot sent later, I was completely locked out of my account. Password changed, number changed, and the hacker started pumping out crypto crap on my stories and my feed for my friends and my followers to sort of like, oh no, wh why is Andrew doing this? And I wasn't even done with groceries. To make matters worse, the hacker also started using my account to hack other people's accounts. It was super upsetting, getting personal messages every day from friends who got hacked because they thought they were messaging me. I was on Instagram, Facebook security every day for weeks, trying to reach support in order to resolve the problem, sending in confirmation photos of me over and over to no avail. Support was exceptionally slow and it sounded like they were dealing with a lot of compromised accounts. On top of this, applications to New York Comic Con's Artist Alley came out and if you remember, part of the process required that I include both my work experience and my social media in the application form. Now, I haven't worked with Marvel or DC or any of the big publishers for the last five years. I'm really just an independent creator, so I felt like my social media was the biggest asset I had getting on the table. And without my Instagram account, which had about 5,000 followers, I didn't feel like I had much else to show. The deadly deadline for applications was June 1st. So while I was waiting for that, I was slowly building up a second IG account, kind of as a backup, hoping that I could get my first account back and also kind of hoping that maybe I could build up the second account, uh, doing reels every day, posting art and all that stuff so that it had like at least a respectable follower count when I submitted, I managed to get it up to 200 followers. Eventually, the time came when I had to send the application in or not be eligible at all. I still hadn't recovered the original account, so all I could do was send in the proxy. And as you probably guessed from the title of this video, a few weeks later, New York Comic Con got back to me saying that my application for the table had been rejected due to high demand for tables. They had to choose and, well, um, my application wasn't good enough. Guys, I, I won't lie, I cried when I got this email. I, I had all these hopes built up for fulfilling this goal and I just felt so, so crushed. All because I did this stupid thing, letting myself get hacked and ugh. This is my first time doing this, so I don't know, maybe they only admit creators who have a robust work history in the last year. Uh, maybe having my IG back wouldn't have made a difference. I don't know how the deliberations work, so I can only guess. 
But, you know, irony of ironies, on the day that I got that email with that really heartbreaking rejection, um, that very evening, Instagram support got back to me and restored my account. So it's back, but you know, no table for 2022. So, <sighs> mission failure. It looks like I won't be tabling at New York Comic Con this year. And listen, I could go on and on about how the rest of my year hasn't exactly gone according to plan. One of my closest friends passed away, my day job got really busy, my family visits, stress, etc, etc, etc. But as we've learned these past few years, life doesn't always go according to plan. It rarely does. And it's important to be flexible enough to pivot when things change so you can still move towards your goals in a constructive way. And, you know, that was the bad news. But here's the good news. These past few months, I've done a lot of good work on the book. Enough to start releasing it. It's called Secret Heart Attack and it's going to be a three-issue miniseries that's eventually going to be collected into a graphic novel. I've printed up issue one and I've started going to comic book stores here in New York to see if they can stock it in their shelves. I'm also working out an online shop so I can get this book in your hands, especially if you don't live in NYC. New York Comic Con is coming up this year and I bought passes for a few days. I'll be attending as an aspiring artist and I'm going to be bringing this issue around as well as my portfolio so I can show any editors and pros that I run into at the show. Hopefully they'll get me some work in the industry so that when the next application period comes up, I can try and get that table again. 2023 will be my year. That's it for this video. It's a bit of a life update, so if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I really want to talk about this new book that I just made, uh, so I'll do it in my next video. Stay tuned for that. Until next time, peace!